Hey guys, welcome back to Dixie Bell's YouTube channel. It's Lauren here from Furniture Flipping Teacher. And today we've got two beautiful side tables that just need a little bit of love. And these are actually a commission piece. I'm doing a whole bedroom set for a couple that actually brought their furniture down from Illinois, which is five hours away from here. So I'm just so blessed and thankful to have people in our community that trust me to bring their furniture so far for me to flip. And I'm excited about these tables most of all because just look at the details on these tables. They're just so intricate and beautiful, but they are a little bit more old and they would like them to be turned into a more light and bright feeling pieces of furniture. And so that is what I am here to do today. I rinsed these all down and since it has such intricate areas and details, I actually filled a squirt bottle with some just clear plain water and that's how I sort of rinsed it so that I could get into all of those crevices. And also since it is going to be very hard for me to get a towel into all those spots, I've put them in the sun to dry out for a little bit before we get to the boss. All dry, it's time to sand. One thing about these tables that my customer wanted was to really try and keep the intricate top. So I am going to do my best to just see what happens. She doesn't like the orangey wood, but yet she wants me to keep the design. So this is gonna be interesting. I have no idea what this is gonna be. Um, under here, I know that this is veneer. You can just tell because there are some peeling away. But one thing that she did say was that she didn't want me to, you know, fill in any of the gouges or things like that because that's just a part of the tables and it makes them, it just makes them more unique and as is as they got them. And so we're gonna try our best to sand them down. And I've got a 220 grit, so we're not going too crazy, but I do kind of want to go down to the, the lighter tone of wood and not the stained portion. So let's try it out. Bada bing, bada boom. These are sanded down. I'm so glad that everything worked out exactly how I thought it was going to and exactly how we needed it to. But these tops are just gorgeous. We are going to start to work on the underside. We are going to do some boss because this is very, these are very old pieces as you guys know and can tell. And so I just really want to stay away from any bleed through that might occur so we're gonna put some white boss on. Again, I'm gonna turn them over so that I can start at the bottom and get all the details and then we'll turn them back over so that we can get any of the other details that we miss. I decided to use white instead of clear because I just figured why not get one coat on there and then I didn't use gray because my, the white is the closest to the color that I'm gonna be painting these. going to be putting this buttercream mineral chalk paint right on over the boss. The boss gave us that protective layer to block any of those stains that might have popped through and so 
That also really helped with coverage. As you can see, there's not very much popping through here as far as the dark brown goes. So I'm gonna be using my round large brush and this is a little bit smaller than the oval mini that I was using for the boss, but I really think that the round brush is going to help me just get into those different and intricate areas in this piece. Right, the first coat of buttercream is on, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap my brush up, and that's gonna dry for a bit. I'll come back with some touch-ups. Luckily, that boss really helped on the coverage, um, so I'm not sure we'll be needing a second coat. Let's let that dry. We're back for some touch-ups, and there's just a couple of spots where you can see through to the, just it's just a little bit lighter in a couple of spots, so I'm gonna go ahead and touch that up and let that dry before we move on to the tops. Okay, I'm finished up with touch-ups. Again, there really wasn't that many because that boss helped with coverage amazingly. So overall, we did one coat of boss, one coat of buttercream, and then a touch-up coat of buttercream. So next up, we are going to be working on the tops of these guys. I am going to be doing a paint wash over the tops of these. So instead of leaving them the wood color, we decided that it would be kind of neat to do a paint wash, which is just very light paint. It's kind of like a stain. So we'll still be able to see these beautiful designs as my customer wanted, and but it'll kind of tie it all together with this same buttercream because the color I'm going to be using is buttercream and this can is a different can than I was using for the bases this one I actually watered down previously for another project so there's a lot more water in here than paint so I'm going to be using this for the paint wash since I already had it created so it's very liquidy compared to a much more thick chalk paint that I used for the bottom. So with this, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my mini brush, I'm gonna spray it, and then I'm also gonna wet down my surface here. Get it pretty wet. I'm just doing this with my mister bottle. You could also brush on water if you wanted to do that too. And then, I'm gonna just dip in here and then go ahead and paint back and forth. So it'll really soak in. It looks a little scary, like you won't be able to see the design, but here in just a minute when we wipe it back, you'll be able to. So now I'm gonna take my lint-free cloth and wipe back the extra paint. We'll start by just wiping it back, getting it all off, and then we'll worry about going in the correct direction. With this design, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna try and do it of the direction of the wood, but since it's all kind of going different directions, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging. So that really lightened up that top, but I think it looks really good because I'm so glad that you can still see that design. If you wanted it to be darker, then you could also do another application. If you wanted it to be lighter, you could water it down a bit. I just see a couple spots where I might wanna remove a little bit of paint before it fully, fully dries. And now I'm gonna do the same exact process to this table. Main goal is to get them to look fairly similar with the washed colors and that's a little bit tricky I'm finding out. I've never actually done two separate washes on two separate pieces but I'm thinking that honestly they look pretty good so. So thumbs up on the wash. We're gonna let that dry for a bit now and then we will be coming back with some wax to top coat and to give it a little bit more depth. With the top coat I'm gonna be using Best Dang Wax for 
um, the bottoms here and the top in clear, but then for the bottoms, the legs, and all of the details, I'm gonna be going back over it with some brown. I'm gonna use my best dang brush, and we are going to just apply the wax onto all of this detail. The reason you do the clear wax first is so that the brown wax is more manipulative and able to be wiped away easier because it's not necessarily going straight to the paint, but it's, it has that layer of clear wax. So if I wanna wipe more back of the brown, I will be able to, and it won't be stuck on the paint surface. When you're waxing, basically what you wanna do is make sure that you get the wax really into that paint. So you're just gonna work it in by doing swirls, bringing it along there, just rubbing it in as best you can in all the spaces. And then you could take a microfiber cloth and wipe back. I'm not gonna wipe back the bottoms yet because again, I'm gonna be putting that brown wax on there. Now it's time for the fun part, the brown wax. Okay, all finished up with the brown wax, and I'm thinking that these look pretty good. They are definitely a more antique style now, and I just love the way that the brown wax really accentuates those intricate details all over the table. I also did put some brown wax on the tops just to darken it up a tad bit. You can even barely even tell, but I just thought since it's a little darker at the bottoms that I wanted to darken up the top as well. And plus wax is a protective layer anyway, so that helps with protection on the tops, especially because these are nightstands. So they're gonna feel, or they're going to get some more traffic, things like setting your water down at night and things like that. So I'm ready to head over to the staging wall. These babies are all finished up. And like I said, these are for a client and I've got a couple other pieces that I'm gonna be doing for them. So look for those coming up either on our channel or on Dixie Bell's channel. We are not gonna do too much staging for these tables because like I said, it's for a client, but I always make sure to take before and after pictures. Well, at least have Neiman do it for me, but I always just wanna have that in a portfolio. That way, if I do continue to get clients coming to me, seeing what I can do, that I always have these documented and I can show them. I actually have done this type of piece before. so. These are also, like I said, a part of a set for a whole bedroom set. So get subscribed down below here on Dixie Bell's channel and over on our channel, Furniture Flipping Teacher, because this set is coming soon. It is a dresser and a king sleigh bed. So I'm going to be doing this to match those nightstands so you can just imagine what that is going to look like. I'm excited to bring them all together. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you learned a little bit more about waxing. I'll see you on the flip side.